again, and welcome to Vance Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons Garthway. And I'm Carla Garrett. And here we are, one day post New Hampshire primary. Woo! One day? So, one uh, day. <laughs> so a lot happened. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um I, I will start with just some stories while mm, we find yeah, our stuff. So uh, Fox and Friends was here. Mm -hmm. They were doing their media mm -hmm. out of Bedford Village yeah. Inn. And yeah. they contacted us. Uh, this was more through the Free State Project or the Liberty Movement in yeah. New Hampshire. And they were like, hey, let's do a walk and talk downtown. And we'll get the founder and me and our new ED, Eric Brakey, who is the senator in Maine. So he had to come down from Maine. It was like a big deal. He was staying with me. Like, we all had to spit and polish, but then also, like, dress for like, winter in right, New Hampshire. Right, and be winter primary in New Hampshire. Uh, you know, all of that. We actually met in this building's foyer and, like, used this as our landing to, like, start to, to go yeah. out. They told us it was going to be a three-minute segment with, like, all these things. And they get 10 seconds? It was 30 seconds, Eric only, which, you know, which I mean, fine. that's how it goes. Yeah, it's kind of one of those ones where I was like, damn it, I wish I'd made the cut, but it is how it but goes. But it is amazing you spend all this time for 30 seconds, and then you're like, you watch it, and you go like this. Wow. Wow, that was a lot of work. Yeah, so, you know, it was like three hours to get 30 seconds, mm -hmm. so I don't know but how the people in the, in the media do it. But it was 30 seconds with Free State Project, yep. like, on the thing. I could see yesterday engagement yep. was up, people were joining yep. the groups, all of that. So, you know, I'll, I'll take it, but yeah. It is a lot. It people. Was, on, it was funny. I saw a picture today on, I think on Facebook, but don't quote me on, saying things aren't always as they appear. And if somebody had taken a picture, I forget where it was. It might have been out on Elm Street or whatever. And the new, the person on the news was standing on this big box. <laughs> you know, like, so you don't see that, that person standing on a box when you watch them on TV. Right. You don't always see what's happening around them. So it's kind of funny. Oh, and that is actually what happened uh, was Andrew Sylvia, Andy Sylvia from, um, Inklink. Inklink happened to be on the corner. Now, of course, you know, it's New Hampshire in the primary. So, you know, you're walking downtown and there's like news boxes and news crews on corners yep. and all of that. So he was on the corner and he took a photo. I'm not even in the photo because I was marching yeah. down the street to show him where we're going, you know. But, but there was this photo of my entourage and it's, you know, it's like, four cameramen and everyone and he was like media entourage following carla around and i was like <laughs> and then i was like now i'm not even in the clip right. like okay great Aww. thanks for that <laughs> um so couple my couple on monday night let me back this up sunday was that sunday whatever I know, day it's like, like one of these days i guess it was saturday weekend. saturday dan and i went with some friends which is why we went. We went to the Trump rally at SNU Arena. How was that? Um, very big. I mean, I, I went to show a property at in two degrees Fahrenheit in Lancaster. Yeah. That was a seven and a half yes, hour well, round. Yeah, that's trip. a big one. Um, but it was a Trump rally. I mean, it was pretty much the same. Um, that one of the interesting takeaways. I mean, it was a packed house. You know, like people underestimate. And we were counting heads. Like, how many people do you think? Because it's hard to tell. Because was they, that SNU? Yes. Yeah. At the and room. um. We were like, okay, that's kind of genius. At one point, after Trump was already out, um, they bring up on stage pretty much like every dignitary from South Carolina. Uh, the governor, the lieutenant governor, the senators, <laughs> the congressmen, the this, the that, all the, the AG, you know, like right. all of the South Carolina. Parade them out. And the, there was one guy, and I, uh, there's a guy that yelled during um, one of the White House things. You're lying, an old man. That's he's from South Carolina. Anyways, this one older guy is talking, and I don't remember. Could have been the governor. Could have been. I don't really remember who it was, but he goes, um, "Well, you know that what you want, what you really, really want." And we were all <laughs> laughing because there's this old guy. What you want, what you really, really want. He goes, "Well, what they really, really want is Donald Trump." <laughs> you know, like that's what and we were like. That was good, but it was an interesting tactic because I was like, "We're leaving New, Ham New Hampshire, even though Nevada's next, South Carolina's right. the next big goal." And that's her home state, and he's got the all the top. And I mean, Tim Scott's from South Carolina. Like, I don't understand. Another interesting takeaway is as people um, as people dropped off, including DeSantis, as people dropped off, they all endorsed Trump. If you think about it, well, no, so I would love for, to be the fly on the wall of what the promises kind of, are that are happening behind the scenes. But there scenes, were no promises right? made in, from anybody else apparently either, though. So I'm just saying it was interesting to me, and the way they didn't just say I'm just dropping out. They all were. 
it was it, you could. See. It was a hearty endorsement. Yeah. I mean, I always said I thought Vivek was kind of like a placeholder for Trump. So but, that one didn't surprise me. I will tell you, I was at uh, the DoubleTree doing the Radio Row people and uh, did an interview with Granite Groff yeah. and Six O Three Alliance. Uh, you know, and was heading from there to a 430 yeah. DeSantis thing at the farm. And I got a text and it was like, DeSantis out. is out. And I was like, no, he's not. Yeah. And then I was, I was like, oh. I didn't know. I, we were home. We were doing some other things. And I, every once in a while, I'll flip on YouTube and then go to local news. I flip on YouTube and I, per right away before Dan looked up, started playing DeSantis' speech. So Dan's like, oh, DeSantis is giving a speech. And as he get there, Dan goes, oh, he's he just dropped out. So what? I heard he ran out of money. I don't know why I know how he would have. Why wouldn't he just stay on the ballot till Tuesday? Because you bleed money in those last few weeks. I worked for a presidential candidate who dropped out shortly before. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> you dropped, we also said, why things. did he do that? Right. But you, I mean, you could realize... just stop paying. Uh, you could just stop yeah, but, everything, okay. right? But for what? Literally for what? To embarrass yourself in the primary? Because if you stop everything, your numbers are going to go down even more. They do. Really? Yeah. I am not sure any of this matters. I got so many tests from I'm just, so many people, and I did not look at I agree, one of but them. I'm, not one. I'm not convinced. I did not look at one mail. I don't think, I don't know if we're the typical voter, but even if still, I mean, it is. Like, Jeez, I, we're so engaged I, in politics. I think people... <laughs> There's a lot of reasons. I mean, I, I, it was, it's always disheartening, you know, like you, because you're not. But it was kind of funny to me because then in my head I was like, okay, you, you have to step back. Like when, when Rand dropped out, like everybody goes, well, you guys were all devastated. And I'm like, well, we were devastated just because we were exhausted, and you know, we just went and drank for three days. I mean, that was the real <laughs> thing. But we weren't like, oh my god, we knew through that entire race we could not seem to find a way to stop Trump that all every day it was like we can't seem to get this so now on Monday or whatever day it was some of the DeSantis team people are supporting DeSantis which I can understand being disappointed I get it but they're like oh well fine now you have to vote between these and I was like where have you been for the last six months because never ever in any of this race was anybody beating Trump ever Ever. That's just the numbers. That's just math. You can go back six months ago, five months ago, four months. Every single poll showed that but, Donald Trump was winning not okay, only. Okay, but the polls said Hillary was going to win, so why do we believe the polls, right? But so the polls ha really have been matching. I've been, that was my. I mean, that is. That, that is, is an interesting take. So Monday night, we're watching, you know, YouTube or something, and they've got some, the latest poll. And I, of course, this morning, for the like life of me, could not find right? it. And it was like 56, 38. So yeah. I, it was like 16, 17 points. I'm like, okay. But then they started digging in, and that was when I was like, oh, that's interesting. So, for those who don't know, <laughs> Trump won New Hampshire. No, but we have <laughs> we have a semi-open primary in New Hampshire, meaning Republicans can vote in the Republican primary, and undeclared voters can choose to vote in either the Republican or the Democrat party. There are some states that have completely open primaries, and you can vote in whatever primary you want, regardless of what your affiliation is. We are a semi-open primary. Um, so they did the numbers and they showed, you know, Trump 56, Haley 38, whatever it was. And then they showed, um, I did look at one thing this morning when they said voting for Trump because of Trump or voting for Trump against, Haley. like, they were split why people <laughs> were voting. Like, literally, people were either voting, they were, the people that were voting for right, Haley, voting half of them were war? voting for Haley and half of them were voting for against Trump. So I thought that was interesting. But on Monday, there was one thing they were talking about Republicans. They broke it down, Republicans and independents. Of Republicans, like 76% were voting for Trump. Yes. And then on Haley's, it was much, she got like 60-some percent of the independents. Yes. Which did fit into the narrative, whether worded correctly or not, that Democrats were going to be voting for Haley. Now, obviously, you're not registered Democrats because you can't vote in the, the primary, but all those undeclared voters mm -hmm. that took Republican ballots, ballots to vote for Haley. If you look at the numbers, if you look at the results in New Hampshire, all the liberal cities, Lebanon, New London, Newcastle, you know, Lee. Hanover. All those places went for Haley. Okay. Which fits into exactly what the poll said. The undeclared. so that's a little bit of actual fake 
support in some It's ways? not necessarily. And or, there, or, it does play into the dynamic. Why? Uh, because. Well, it's if, because the Democrats are trying to stop Trump. But, but I thought Biden, the only but, way to stop Trump is to stop talking about him. And well, that's no what one I'm saying. can do that. How can, <laughs> if the Democrats just want to win the White House, then they would have to believe. And they probably would not have well, no. an 81-year-old if you're a, grandpa if you're a Democrat, the ticket. If you're a Democrat that happens to not be registered in a party, but you're a Democrat because you live in one of these towns. This isn't Republicans in those towns sure. voted for Haley, overwhelming. Yep. Because the number isn't drastic. You know right. what I mean? It, it's like instead of her getting 53%, she might have gotten 60 or 62%. So, so if... Um, if undeclared people who happen to be actual Democrat voters, they always pull the Democrat ballot. And this time they vote pull a Republican ballot, which I will tell you, for those of you who think your information is private, it's not. It's Trust not. me. And you're on all our lists now. Because I, I want to look. <laughs> I want to look at undeclared voters in these towns and see yes. if they all used to take Democrat and then they took yes. a Republican. So if you did that, why would you want Nikki Haley versus Donald Trump for the general election, if you're a Democrat, because they're trying to stop Trump. They, or they thought, right? They they, they, thought, they think that Haley they is easier to beat than so, Trump. So the people who have Trump derangement syndrome. It's really sad. It's think, really think that someone can take him out. And, and here's I don't the reality. See it. I, I just think he's going to have a second term. I hope he picks a really, really, really good great VP. vice. Yes. Maybe Vivek. I mean, I would I love know. to see a Trump RFK so ticket. We, I think that would just we break the We were talking universe. about this that at the Trump rally. Awesome. At the Trump rally, we were just talking amongst ourselves. And, you know, people, some of them are. Because that would be an America ticket. They, well, you know. Not when, a, a global elite. Clip, clip, I remember being surprised Christine. when he picked Pence, and I was like, what? Oh, no, th no. But that was for the evangelical vote. So, thinking why people pick vice presidential candidates. Barack Obama did not, you know, like, Biden picked Harris for, I don't know why, because I don't even know. <laughs> but I'm just saying, usually there's, some, there's a strategic <laughs> move. So, like, I think, wow, Trump Vivek would be amazing for me. But which pool of voters does it bring into the Trump team? None of them, right? If so he picks hit Nikki, he's going no, to lose I don't, a and lot I don't, of support. I don't see the, that. Because, so this is so ironic, right? Because the anti-war Republicans, there are some Many of us. Many anti No, I think there's a lot more than people realize. And also because a lot of Republicans serve. And once you've actually gone to you don't war, do you, it. Don't you don't want to do it, it anymore, it, right? right? So, so I mean, the anti-war Republicans are just Haley is not a good choice. She's a uh, she's, well, she's a, a neocon. She's a neocon. She's, she's, you she's know, a warmonger. She's millionaire, paid for or, millionaire by the military-industrial yeah. complex, and she's just bad news if you actually want more peace in the world. Right. So, who do you think Trump? Well, so pick? we were talking about that, and I said, okay, because you got to remember, guys, it's strategic. Because everybody's like, well, what about DeSantis? I said they're both from Florida. Ooh, Tulsi. Tulsi is an interesting thing. I mean, thing, but so it'd be, I, if I was Trump, I'd pick a woman. Well, we were saying, <laughs> well, no, we were saying that, that it probably should be a woman or a minority. Like, those are strategic. <gasps> Christy Nome? Well, we talked Ooh. about that, but does she bring a different bunch of voters? Marjorie Taylor Greene? No, she does not bring a different bunch. <laughs> but then we were talking it through, and we are like, well, Tim Scott, oh, well, what about you? Know, going through the candidates. And I go like this, what about Doug Burgum? No, and I went, everybody went like this. Who? Well, no, wait. <laughs> Doug Burgum. I go, think about it. He was this cowboy guy. Just very, he's a governor. He's just very matter of fact. Governor he's from kind, where? Uh, North Dakota. I One feel of like Dakotas. I have no, no like if I'm you just, made me fight him I'm in saying, a lineup, I, know he's I would have no idea. just kind of easy going go cowboy governor. Right. And I was like from the Northwest and everybody went like this. Mm. I said, mm. different group of voters. Those are not the necessarily right. so it's interesting when when it, whoever it ends up being there's a lot of theories that i don't want to like i would have a when i'm drinking a beer with friends i'll go over them but there's a lot of things that'll go into it it's probably going to be somebody from either the midwest or the west coast i don't think it'll be an east coast person hmm. but i, I could mean, be completely the, wrong the, well it's that's a, a big that's tickets, a big range right? um it it'll be interesting so anyways um so what, Trump got like 54%, got, um, I think. God, or, I feel, wait, I had it. Why don't think they he, just have, oh, right here. Um, I think the overall number was, uh, I see, 
The overall number, Trump was at, this was with 23,000 people left to be counted. This was like 95%. Trump got 54 and a half. Nikki had 43 and a point three. Although I think um, that has, I think Nikki's number went up a little bit since then. I thought I read that oh, she was at Yeah, 46. overnight, because isn't that strange that no, every well, time everyone goes well, to sleep, Well, it just depends on the, where those 23,000 votes, because that is like almost 10% change. of the vote. So now, I'm curious, tell me if you have this data. I might, because I've also How many people wrote in uh, Grandpa? Um, A lot, 62%. Of no, the Democrat, no, no, but, oh, I how know, many but like, oh, yeah, like actual um, physical write-ins, because that's 65, an interesting number. 65,794 people wrote in Joe Biden. That's interesting. Um, so I was curious about that number because um, I think usually only about, what, 222,000 people vote in the primary? Well, Does that's that what sound I would about know. right? Well, this is what was and interesting. This, we had more, right? On uh, the projections from the Secretary of State, he was saying that he thought 322,000 Republican ballots would be cast. That's B Breaking the record. Number, yeah. I totaled up this report, which yeah. you can't see all of it because it stopped, so who knows? There might have been another three votes after this. Um, this comes to, and it says there's 23,000 left. This would be like 330,000 oh, wow. people took Republican ballots. Now, they're not all Republicans. We know this. We just talked about that. Right. But um, on the Democrat side, it looks like... Um, that should be a lower 65, number. 85, 90, maybe 100. It's not 100. It might be 95. 100,000? Yeah. So we had 330,000 motivated Republicans and 100,000... These are uh, just extrapolated off Tammy's Papers notes here. Numbers, uh, Democrats. So that one to me also says that the Democrats aren't particularly motivated. Uh, and and not in this election, because there was no. That maybe like 100,000 well, no, so pulled Nikki ballots, So right? it is interesting. Yeah. I do think that if I was a Democrat, what was the motivation for me to leave my house? <sighs> Right? You just people. Oh, like, yeah, no, it was cold. So, and... but Trump got 167,000 people to come out and vote for him versus 65,000 that went out to write vote in Joe Biden. Biden. So, Dan follows a lot of the national polls on our like state, it for the general. He tracks a lot of this mm -hmm. stuff. Like, I'm looking at the primary, and he's like, okay, but Trump's winning in seven of the swing, like seven out of seven swing states. states. That's the difference. Like, unless you can show numbers that show that Biden is. I mean, the I mean, real maybe question it's not I think Biden. is just going to be, you know, how hard is whom going to cheat this time? Well, and at least there'll be more eyes on the cheating. Hopefully. I mean, know. I don't know. When you have video of people it's carrying in boxes uh, and Dan unloading did. them and putting them in the machine, and that's somehow, like, not Dan evidence. Dan saw something, some thing, and he goes, oh, that's funny. It was, like, the majority, more than half. 60%, I think it was, of people who voted, um, re registered Republicans or said they would be voting in November, said they would still vote for Trump even if he was found guilty. So 60% I, I, of the no. Republican voters are like, I don't really care if he's found guilty because you know why? Nobody believes it's legit. So, so I mean, I think that is um, sad and, and probably something we should just sit with, right? Because that is really indicative that people just don't feel like there's rule of law no. anymore. And that is a difficult place to be because it's, it's really bad. hard because to it, it's like when you rule make, of law when you, no one believes I it. always <laughs> say to people you know if you want me to set set some ground rules for things and they're rules that and I make rules that benefit me I have to understand that when you make, get to make the rules you're going to make the rules that benefit you so when we open these Pandora boxes of things that aren't right on either side all it really is is inviting it that to be that much worse when you know hands well, change. Well, that's literally where we are now. That's why it is so. The 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 landscape is garbage. Like the um, political landscape is not speak, healthy. Uh, so another tidbit from Tuesday that it's kind of not majorly important, but it is, and I wanted to look it up. Um, there were two state rep special elections mm, in Coas County. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you read the articles, it sounds like the Republicans picked up two seats. The Republicans won both seats. One of them was previously held by a Republican, so that's okay. not really a plus one. Right. Uh, but the other one was a Democrat, so we switched oh, a, a Democrat seat to, um, I don't know, okay. Coas. They only have okay. seven state reps. I know this one is <laughs> Lancaster. I don't remember what this one was. Um, but I just thought that was interesting. That So now the House does have a plus one. Right. 
over where I mean they had they were down one for the seat that Myrna resigned because he was stupid um so they got that one back and then they t whatever reason I don't know why Hatch left um they picked up that seat so that's a good thing and on to a short I and bought there many are papers. a few more special elections coming up March 12th I believe in Portsmouth and somewhere else so uh, I think it, the, both of them sounded like they were pretty blue, but that there were better Democrat candidates than uh, So others. the last thing, because so. we got about five, ten, five minutes, six minutes, something like that. So the thing I started out this week on before the election, um, for those of you who might remember in the last, you know, months ago now, back in um, June, um, State Senator Keith Murphy, who owns Murphy's Tap Room, was arrested for supposedly assaulting this person, right? That was back in June. Um, on Monday, I believe it was Monday, um, Keith Murphy was found 100% innocent. Guilty. He yeah. did not assault anybody. And the reason I bring it up, beside the fact that it irks me, because the arrest was on the front page of the union leader. Of course. And then the story. My arrest was on the front page right. of the but union leader. But then the story leader. about it's how out. he wasn't guilty was, you know, six pages in. Yeah. And. The union leader story, I read I read it because I try to be a little objective, you know. And I was like, okay, there's p bits missing here. And I had read the um, Inkling story, which was much better written, in my opinion. So here's the problem. And then I know I read Keith's, um, I read Keith's statement on it. So here's what I know about this from these articles and just from Nora. Um, the, what, what transpired supposedly happened back in April. And what from these articles I can ascertain is um, one of the employees at the diner was like being belligerent and stuff and Keith fires him. You're fired. So now once you're fired and you remain on the property, you're actually trespassing. Right. And from what I was told, like this guy's going around the restaurant, kicking things, yelling at people. And you know, Keith's following him because dude, you're ruining my restaurant. This is my <laughs> business. Right. Um, and it's raining out, I know that. And so they were outside at some point, and then Keith is, um, at one point, I think there, there's video, which Keith provided to the police on the next day. Keith gave the police, the day after the incident, the videotape and a list of witnesses. Here are the people who knew what was happening. Um, in the video, at some point, I guess, Keith picks up a chair, but like more in a defensive thing, because this guy is crazy. Okay. And this guy claims that Keith spit on him. Okay, I know Keith. Keith's not somebody who's going to spit. And, you know, it's just not going to. So that's at, say, like May 1st. They have a list of these sick witnesses. They never interview any of these witnesses. <laughs> never. Oh, wow. Five weeks later, they um, go to a judge and get a warrant for Keith's arrest. Five weeks after an incident that you've never taken a single moment to talk to anybody other than the guy who claims this happened. Now, in there, just so you're all aware, Keith is voting as a state senator. Keith, I served on um, the election, I served on Labor Committee with Keith as a, a House rep. Um, he has voted to legalize pot and decriminalize pot, which the police don't like. He has um, voted to re diminish... Um, right to her? No, no, the... Um, Qualified immunity for uh. police. He said, you know, you can't just, it's not a free for all for police. And the one, the kicker, is there was a bill to increase pension benefits. There was a bill back in like 2011, which Keith and I served together, where we said, okay, you no longer can um, add on police details in the last few years to boost your pension up. <laughs> yep. You worked for 20 years at this level, and then in the last <laughs> year you work, make all this overtime, and then now we pay you forever this extra money. So those it, it ended that. And they were grandfathered, but everybody going forward was not going to get that little perk. So this year there was a bill to take all the people that did, lost the perk and add them back to the grandfathered people, <laughs> which would have cost the taxpayers like $250 million. What? I could be wrong. I'm probably wow. No, to the cost of the taxpayer of two hundred and fifty million dollars, it would have increased a quarter of a billion. It would dollars. have increased. That's an incentive. Increased pension benefits for seventeen hundred and fifty law enforcement officers across the state, and Keith did not support it, and he rightfully shouldn't have because it was stacking pension That's money. It was a lot bad of money. Well, that vote happened to happen in that five weeks. Oh, but, interesting. Um, one of the lead 
police investigators or the police guy or whatever reached out and asked Jeb Bradley if Keith was going to resign. And funny how you're so interested in the senator resigning Ooh. after he supposedly assaulted somebody. You're, why would you call the Senate president? So there's a lot going on. Um, you know, the they man, say follow the money. The man who accused admitted on the stand that that didn't happen, that what he said happened didn't happen. Um, it's kind of awkward when there is video. <laughs> well, and why did it take 10 weeks for, from the time that it happened before they interviewed there's a really they interview those witnesses. Why would you go to a judge and say, we need a warrant for this assault because this one person over here says so, but we haven't talked to anybody else, so we haven't tried to see if there's a I mean, opposing. sometimes with the policing, it's just hard for me to know if it's just rank incompetence, laziness, don't or care just, Or do they have motivations? Or are there motivations? But there's a great Netflix series that just came out. Um, I think it was Netflix. It's Anyway, it's a woman and her partner, and she gets kidnapped, and it's three parts. And it's it's one of those revelatory docu series where you you're like, just you just watch it and you watch it. It's like they're both occupational therapists. Right. The woman gets kidnapped and the cops just decide, oh, they she, staged this and it's like Gone Girl, and then just decide not to investigate. And you're like, meanwhile, anything. she's kidnapped and and you know kidnapped, raped. Uh, there's physical evidence, all of it, and they're just like, no, we're just not going to believe yeah. you. Like so, in, in um, this, when Keith turned himself in to be arrested, you know, he said, if there's a victim here, I'm the victim. Like, I'm right. the victim here. And, and, I, and the I, way to I, avoid, the system was wrong. Uh, bad, uh, bad notes on policing is to do a better job. Yeah. You know, so it's I mean, not rocket science, folks. Yeah. So that's I'm glad that Keith was found not guilty. I mean, he said this did cause an immense amount of damage to oh, his personal and his business. business. He's and... lost a lot of business from it, you know, and that and the legal bills and all that stuff. And I did ask. Ooh, him, I, I think we should find out who this police officer who was following up with Jeb Bradley is and maybe uh, oh. do a little snooping. Um, <laughs> but you know, he. I think we're. Out I of said, time. can you sue? And he says, yeah, they're pretty much, they you know, pretty much got Teflon on. The police are pretty much. Yeah, and the thing is also, it, it extends your, your lack of better word, trauma. trauma. Right, the more you get mired in it, the more I you're think, spending um, your attention and time on negative I hope that I see things, some right so. to know requests yes. regarding the communications between the police yes. officers. Um, um, and I will not be surprised to see that. Um, that's all we have. So congratulations to Donald Trump and apparently Joe Biden. And now it's on to Nevada, which nobody ever talks about, and then on to South Carolina. And then, you know, at some point, somebody's just going to accept the fact that it's Well, I think the people. word on the street is if Nikki loses South Carolina and her numbers her don't state, show right. then Come you know, on, it's kind of over. So we'll see. You know? Um, in the meantime, a little bit of snow this week, snow and rain. Um, nothing, knock on wood, not, bad so, not too bad so far. Um, if you have any questions, suggestions, criticisms, recipes, whatever, <laughs> you can email us at manchtalk at gmail.com, and we'd gladly um, welcome your input. Check out Carla's books. Um, I'm pretty sure they're both on Amazon. I was quoted in Newsweek yesterday. Front cover story. <laughs> da, da. Yeah, I was All right, go radar. find that on my website, carlagarrick.com. Thanks, guys. See you next week.